Kia ora koto, nga mihi nui ki a koto i tēnei ahi ahi. No mai haere mai ki tēnei hui. He karakia, ki o hora te marino, ki o whakapapa ko namu te moana. He hua rahi mā tātou i te rangi nei. Aroha atu, aroha mai. Tātou i a tātou katoa. Homi e, hui e, taiki e. May peace be widespread. May the seas be like green stone. A pathway for us all this day. Let us show respect for each other and for one another to bind us together. Ko Helen Hedges Takawingawa, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the third seminar in the University of Auckland Faculty of Education and Social Work Early Childhood Seminar Series for 2022. We showcase the work of early childhood academics and teachers. We remain in webinar format for this session on conceptualizations of teachers' hawora and well-being, presented by a multi-institutional team. Our next two web uh, seminars will also be in webinar format, as we will welcome two Australian presenters into our series on May the 2nd and May the 30th. So look out for those flyers in due course. Today's seminar, however, is specifically on teacher well-being. So as of interest to our typical audience of teachers and teacher educators who support students in their studies and who have likely also needed to attend to their own haora and well-being more attentively in the past couple of years. Please, as usual, use the Q&A function during the presentation to pose any questions that you would like Justine to ask at the end of the session. Shortly, you will be advised about the use of the chat function for this particular seminar as our presenters invite your contributions. A recording of this seminar will be available after the webinar on our YouTube channel for you to promote with your colleagues. Now I'll hand over to Justine to invite the team to present to us. Kara Hammond. So it's my great pleasure today to introduce you to the cross-institutional research team behind today's seminar presentation. And the research team are from the Open Polytech, Mary Liz Broadley, Unitech, Pauline Bishop, Auckland University of Technology, Andrew Gibbons, Rainy Yu, Rebecca Hopkins, and Johita Lenson, and the University of Auckland, Kitty Gould, Yakova Matapo, and myself. And Healthy Families Waitakere has also made a significant contribution to this research team. This group who are all knowledgeable and experienced researchers, teacher educators and learning community leaders have come together to research early childhood student teacher hawora and well-being. The project is underpinned by a dedication to treasure and nurture early childhood student teachers during their studies and throughout their journey as teachers and leaders. And the research aims to contribute provocations for the design of early childhood teacher education programs. The research team are collectively concerned with better understanding the ways in which student teachers navigate their studies, how the navigated journey contributes to professional learning, identity and experience, and how these factors impact on the hawara and well-being of student teachers. Phase one of this research project was completed in 2021, and these findings are what the research team will be sharing today. And without further ado, I would like to hand over to Pauline Bishop from Unitech to begin the presentation. Well, welcome, no mai haramai, and welcome to you all. It's a great pleasure to have you uh, engage with us this afternoon. Uh, we're excited about what we're about to share with you. Uh, poi poia te kākano ke kia puawai. Nurture the seed and it will bloom. We all need love and care to recognise our potential. This um, whakatauki is from uh, Hini Moa uh, Elder, and uh, we really, uh, really underpins what we're thinking about. Kia ora. And who are we? Who are we? Thank you, Pauline. Uh, well, and thank you, Justine, as well, for um, introducing us. Um, essentially, we are a team of um, 
early childhood educators and uh, student supporters uh, from a range of institutes. Um, so you can see um, our names there. Um, and you'll um, hear from a few of us over the course of the next uh, hour and others of us will come in towards the end uh, where we have a, a time for discussion. Um, I'd just like to reiterate the acknowledgement of uh, Healthy Families Waitakere and the work that um, we've been doing and the support from um, our institutions as a whole who have been um, supportive of this research. Um, thank you, Pauline, could you get us on to the next slide? Um, so here are um, some photographs of, of the team. Um, um, uh, Justine and Yo are not uh, represented here. Um, this um, photo actually brings a lot of memories back for me. Um, at the beginning of this research project um, was the beginning of 2020. We started thinking and talking and working on this work. Um, and this, this image of all of us smiling faces um, really takes me back to that time um, where we decided to focus on, on well-being, what that might mean for early childhood and early childhood student teachers. Um, and then we were thrown into a series of lockdowns in Auckland here. Um, and I think um, the way that we sort of travelled through the, the previous two years um, and the meetings that we've been having on well-being and poor and the, the first question that we would always ask was, how are you? Um, so this real focus on, on well-being um, has just permeated our whole uh, workings, essentially, of this research. Um, so I just actually would like to acknowledge um, everyone uh, for that period, um, those two years that we've all sort of lived through, um, those, those regular meetings that we had and that, that um, validating of, of our own personal horror and well-being um, was a, a real gift. Um, so thank you. Um, and I'll pass on to Jacoba um, now um, for her um, speak on her, about her poem, A Student Teacher's Promise. Afataitele Lavo, Rebecca, thank you. Um, a Student Teacher's Promise. Student teacher to the child, I promise you I'll care for you. I promise I will listen. I promise I will do my best. Your journey fuels my mission. Student teacher to self. I promise you I'll care for you, but I'm struggling to listen. When I promise I will do my best, the pressure leaves me wishing. My journey fuels a hope for change of balance and connection. I promise to rise each day resisting markers of regression. The elusive fragments of burnout or the stresses and disconnection. I promise I will give my best. My well-being may come second. Tomorrow will be better. The promise of the profession. The poem that I share with you comes from the key findings from the first phase of our research project, which will be discussed in later parts of this presentation. The words in the poem present some of the tensions felt and experienced by student teachers across Aotearoa. You'll notice the micro to macro considerations evident within the narrative shared, from the personal to the broader political landscape. For us as researchers, the data or voice speaks to us through experience, a multi-directional, multi-faceted conversation that you know picks up, drops off, shifts or changes direction. Poetry as method, utilized as another way to sense and story data, has provided ways to generate multiplicitous connections in, in our thinking, feeling, sensing, and being, all around haora and, and well-being. I'll just pop to the next slide, please. So for now, I invite you to join in the Thalanoa, join us in the conversation by using the chat function in the Zoom below. Consider the following question here, and please, we welcome you to post your response. The question here, how are haora and well-being experienced with your, within your early childhood community? And as we engage in the conversation today and invite you to be part of this conversation, I will be um, in the background um, 
creating for us collectively a poem. So I'll be sharing that with you towards um, the end of the presentation. Thank you. Pass it over now to, to the next slide, the overview. Thank you. Thank you, Yakova. Um, so absolutely in the ethos of this research project, um, this is a shared presentation. So I will speak briefly about the overview of this project um, before passing on to um, Rainey um, and Kerry to talk more about um, phase one data and findings. Um, and then as a group, we'll come back and answer any questions or um, you may have or may have been prompted by um, the questions that we'll be asking of you. Um, and then as Jacoba said, she will um, share back to you your, uh, your thoughts, your feelings, your experiences um, and memories of what um, her and well-being might have been felt, uh, experienced um, or what your memories were, um, both as a, a, a teacher or perhaps as a student teacher. Um, and then um, Glenn will close off our space. Um, so on, on to our next slide. Thanks, Pauline. Um, and the question um, of, of all research, I suppose, is so why are we researching um, into this area? Um, so um, we're a team, as I said, a team of early childhood uh, teacher educators and also um, student supporters. Um, and we have a shared... Um, a collective understanding um, and, and concern uh, to, to better sort of understand the ways in which um, student teachers um, move through um, their education in tertiary providers um, and then how that continues into their um, professional uh, learning and um, experiences of being a teacher um, in our profession. Um, so, as um, providers of initial education for student teachers and um, the, for the, the teaching profession, um, we really understand um, the experience that student teachers have within their um, beginning student uh, studies as, as um, something that they're going to be taking with them into the profession itself. Um, and we understand um, well-being and or as being a very complex um, sort of manifest of both direct and indirect experiences, which are experienced as student teachers move through um, their, their studies. Um, and our understanding of this is it's holistic, um, it's cognitive, it's effective um, and embodied learning. So in this research, we sought to um, learn more about student experiences of studying uh, for an ECE qualification. Um, and our focus is uh, due to our belief that um, early childhood teacher um, or, and well-being are very important elements of being a teacher. Um, so we're thinking about uh, sustaining our profession and um, we believe that knowing more about student teacher or uh, can benefit both the studying of, of for this profession, but also teaching itself. Um, so as we've identified, um, there's this collective of different institutions who have come together, um, Healthy Families Waitakere, AUT, Unitech, um, the University of Auckland and Open Polytech um, to conduct this research, um, which I suppose is um, really, underpinned or the heart perhaps of it is, is uh, concern for the well-being of um, the children in our centres, the teachers in our centres, the student teachers in our universities and, and what how that all sort of comes together um, as a whole. Um, so the aim of the research was um, to, to provoke um, or to contribute to some provocations um, for ITE, so initial education um, teacher education around um, the design of early childhood teacher education programs. Um, so in the very beginnings of this project, we spent a lot of time um, discussing exactly what horror and well-being um, are, what, are they, what do they mean? Um, and part of this initial groundwork was in conversation with Matua Hare at um, 
Unitech. And what we what we realised through um, through talking and reflecting and, and talking more and thinking and more talking um, was that Hora and well-being are very personal, uh, interpersonal, um, cultural, embedded, um, and, and political. Um, and that em embracing this complexity and multiplicity um, is very much a part of our research work, what we were doing. Um, so um, we then began to think and rethink uh, what uh, horror and well-being means for um, teaching in connection to children. Um, so that the national curriculum or our national curriculum states that the well-being of each child is interdependent with the well-being of their kayako. So we have this understanding of um, an interconnectedness of well-being. So children and teachers and, and systems around centers and everything. So um, a concern for early childhood teacher for and well-being is um, also evident in the recently published um, Hitanga e Tamati. So every child Hitanga um, early action. Um, early Learning Action Plan, um, which clearly identifies national and international concerns uh, regarding early childhood um, teacher working conditions that impact on the goals that we have for young children um, in early childhood um, education and care before they reach school. Um, also, while student health and well-being are um, considered as um, essential values for tertiary institutions. Our research shows that um, the way in which higher education may contribute to the increasing levels of um, stress for tertiary students. So part of being a student itself um, might be creating stress for, for our student teachers. Um, so this uh, cause a more of a, an understanding um, studies of, of higher education that focus on the whole person, so the student as a, a whole being with a holistic notion of themselves um, and their complex journey through uh, studies at a tertiary or higher level um, learning um, space, um, highlight the potential for study to contribute to the reconceptualization of professional education. Uh, so for instance, learning to become an early childhood teacher um, requires more from student teachers um, than the performance of necessary knowledge or skills. Um, so I think um, just thinking about the student teachers who participated in our research back in um, the end of 2020, um, just like to acknowledge um, the time that they, they shared um, their views and their experiences with us at, at that time um, and also all the uh, teacher education providers and, and our colleagues who have um, expressed support of this work um, and shared the in invitation to participate with the student teachers themselves. Um, so a focus on resilience. Resilience is often uh, talked about in terms of um, bouncing back, so you kind of bounce back, um, but reconsidering this as the ability to move forward um, leads to the question of where to next, and this will be returned to later in uh, our presentation. Um, but before I pass on to Rainey, um, please consider for a moment our second um, provocation question, which is uh, um, asking you to cast your mind um, and your heart back to when you were a student teacher. Um, and what do you know now that you wish you knew then about Torah and wellbeing? Um, and if you can please add your um, comments into the chat space so that you probably can weave those into her poem that um, we will be sharing back to you at the end of this presentation. So if you could just take a moment to do that um, and I'll hand on to you, Rainey. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. Kia ora, everyone. My name is Rainey. I'm from AUT. So to recap what Rebecca was saying in this research, we are actually interested in the lived experience of our student teachers 
lectures. We had planned for four phases for this project. And throughout these phases, we follow a principle from a utilization focused evaluation, which has a strong focus on improving practice. So it is the practice uh, of us as IT providers that we're trying to look at. And one of the principles of this utilization focus evaluation is that we are involving the members within our community, which is the early childhood um, community, as well as uh, early childhood teacher and educators to participate in this research, contribute to the research design. And hopefully we are the people who will be implementing those findings. In other words, we all together working with our student teacher participants um, are the people who care about the findings and really, really wanting to drive the changes um, that comes out of the findings. So the data presented here um, which Kerry would introduce later, um, were from phase one, which was anonymous online survey using the Qualtrics survey tool. So the survey was designed to invite demographic data as well as preliminary topical responses res regarding student teachers' experiences and participations of co-ora and well-being. So, the purpose was to collect data regarding the perspective and experience of the student teachers in order to inform the future delivery of initial teacher education programs. So in October 2020, when the nation was at level one of its pandemic response, the dean and head of schools for each program were invited to share an invitation with students by online and physical messaging, as well as news systems. In addition, we also sent invites um, on some closed and private social media networks within early childhood profession. Um, there were 15 questions in the online survey as well as a link to share contact details for student teachers who wish to be involved in the later phases. In total, 101 student teachers participated in this survey. In this survey, we asked student teachers to indicate what motivated them to study early childhood education, how they feel about their studies right now, what keeps them going, as well as how they are supported during their studies, both internally and external of the ITE programs. The demographic questions were used to facilitate the development of student teacher case studies, providing narrative snapshots of student teachers that contribute to the thematic analysis. Data was also analyzed then through post qualitative poetic inquiry, which was presented at the start of this presentation. The the phase two of this project was originally planned as a vananga in which we invite the participants who contributed to phase one to also get together with us and unpack their responses and really imagine or reimagine with us how to make IT programs to better facilitate future student teachers' aura and well-being. However, due to COVID last year, which is, was 2021, we had to postpone the vananga, but we had inform the interested participants about this change and we would like to engage with them in this year um, in which we will hold a wananga in person as our way to appreciate, care for and support their aura and well-being. Follow, following what um, Kerry would would introduce you to specific findings from our phase one. Now I'll pass you on to Kerry. Thank you, Kerry. Uh, kia ora Raine and uh, kia ora everyone, ko kiri taku ingoa from the University of Auckland. Um, I, my job is to talk to you about some of the findings that um, emerged from the phase one research survey and also some of the implications of these findings for uh, initial teacher education. So um, as Raine said, the survey had 15 short answer questions that focused on students um, lived experiences and perspectives on, of hoorder and well-being during their time as a student teacher. Um, and one of the things that we were really struck by in the responses to the survey was um, the, the, the really the felt um, and very uh, authentic way that the participants were sharing their perspectives and experiences with us. And there was a range of um, really powerful experiences shared and um, very complex, which just re revealed the complexities of student teacher lives. 
Um, so one thing that we realized reading the participant surveys was that um, many of the students were describing balancing working, uh, balancing lots of different responsibilities in addition to being a student teacher. So things like um, managing working in early childhood centers or in jobs outside of early childhood centers, balancing responsibilities with parenthood and families, with other um, community organizations that they were involved in. Um, and also balancing the responsibilities or the experience, I should say, of their particular kind of study that they were undertaking. So um, the students in the survey were from field-based teacher education programs, pre-service teacher education programs and online um, initial teacher education programs. Um, and, they, and the students also, the student teachers who responded were also describing um, different sources and levels of personal support for them. So one of the first things that we were struck by as a research, research team was the complexity of students' lives um, and the ways that they, their um, personal situations are really impacted by the complexities and uniqueness of the things that were happening for each participant. So um, while key themes can be discerned from the data, for each student, those themes are really uniquely configured. Um, the data highlights the, the, that student teachers recognize the importance of living a balanced life and of having strong support networks around them. But at the same time, um, making time and being aware of the need to look after their whole order and well-being was recognized as a challenge. The complexity and uniqueness of each student teacher experience cautioned us as a research team against a one size fits all solution to supporting student teacher who order and well-being. And that any attempts to kind of find a magic formula or, um, or specific strategies were likely to be ineffective because of the complexities of the student experience um, and may even make things worse. One thing that we realized after um, overviewing the data was that any solution um, that we came up with would need to be responsive to particular situations and challenges and would necessarily have to include sustained and inclusive dialogue and reflection. Um, but there were some findings I think that we, can, that we can pull out that would be interesting to the audience tonight. So one of the things that we um, student participants were telling us was that they sometimes recognized the support that they had from lecturers and tutors and in initial teacher institutions, um, but they appeared less likely to seek support from those people than from other sources when considering their whole order and well-being. So for most of the participants, student whole order and well-being comes from uh, family peers and then their classmates. And it was, it was interesting that student teachers um, uh, who had good systems of support in place through peers and family um, continued to use those systems of support regardless of what was available to them through their initial teacher education provider. Students did not um, often point to the benefits of well-being practices in their responses, such as meditation and other um, studied approaches of caring for the self. Um, and so one implication of the study may be that um, introducing some of these techniques may help contribute to personal and professional co-order and well-being to the sector. So the complexity of our findings really caution us against trying to find that magic formula that all ITE providers can take up. But there are some implications that providers can think about further. Uh, student um, teachers identified that children were by far the most common motivation for studying. Um, and they were interested in uh, you know, the well-being and experiences of children. And so, Experience of study that better reflect this motivation might be called for an initial teacher education. And in fact, understanding student teachers' motivations for taking up early childhood teaching to begin with might help us to contribute to learning environments that amplify the productive um, and positive experiences of study for student teachers. Since student teachers identified family as important sources of support, um, in relation to their own whole order and well-being, opportunities for enhanced connections to family may also support uh, 
their experiences in teacher education programs. So one challenge for initial teacher education may be in terms of um, finding ways to make connections between these the various you know, personal and professional aspects of student teachers' lives. Since many student teachers were already working in early childhood centres, and it was clear that those experiences could impact significantly on their whole order and wellbeing, open discussions with student teachers regarding the realities and challenges experienced by the early childhood profession, including um, in their own qualification pathways and working environments may better support student teachers to recognizing and responding to their own and others' whole order and well-being. Um, and then finally, we had lots of conversations after um, analyzing the data or, or talk, reflecting on the data as a research team around our duty of care to student teachers and to alumni once they've graduated. And there was a strong feeling within the research team that the findings support the view that our duty of care for alumni doesn't stop with graduation. In fact, caring beyond graduation can establish the grounds for initial teacher education, educated providers to support the sector in noticing, recognizing and responding to early childhood teacher experiences of a whole order and wellbeing and may in turn lead to alternative kinds of educational experiences and outcomes for students. A key question for this research team going forward then will be to identify some of the possible ways that initial teacher educate, education providers can continue to support student teach, the student teacher journey after graduation. So kia ora. thank you Kiri. It was very enlightening and everyone else. Um, kia ora, Mary Liz Broadley, taku ingoa. And it's my um, honour to thank um, the participants in this research tonight. Um, what I will say is we all take a part in this research. Sometimes others present and some last time I presented, some other people present. And that just, I hope, shows you that we're a collective bunch that really want to work for the sector, for the early childhood sector, to give back and to move forward and to always hold at, at the forefront of our minds that um, he tangata, he tangata, he tangata, that people are tonga and, um, and we focus on the children, but we also need to focus on our um, student teachers, our future teachers of the profession. So first of all, uh, um, thank you to the student teachers who participated in this research and to those who enrol in our, in, our, in our courses and our programs because they have that passion to want to, um, I believe, have quality early childhood education for all children. Um, so thank you to them and thank you to anyone in the audience tonight that is a student teacher. I'd also like to uh, acknowledge uh, Matahari Peora. He has been instrumental and supporting the team to work through complexities of managing biculturalism within the research project. We wanted to do the right thing from the play centre days to these days. We've always been in early childhood committed to upholding te riti of Waitangi and um, Matahari understands that and has worked with us tirelessly so that we can work, um, work our way through some of the complexities. And, and this, um, conversation with him is you know we went back to our ethics research ethics groups and committees and um, asked our Maori um, our rangatira there what does this proposal fit with the perspectives of the iwi at Open Polytechnic, the iwi at the University of Auckland, the iwi at AUT. So there's been a lot of groundwork from the very start that we worked collectively in our way forward. So thank you to Matahari for navigating that and to Unitech and, the, and some of the Ponoreo staff there. Um, to our mentors and centres, we'd be lost without you and we know it. Um, for the associate teachers, for the teachers and that take the time to give our stu students their experience, strength and hope. Uh, we can do so much, but you do a lot for us and the profession by um, been for with the teacher on a day-to-day -day basis and we are very grateful for that and um, we know that you're you're doing your bit towards supporting their well-being 
um, to the whānau who believe. A uh, big part of our research, a lot of the students um, acknowledge their ainga, their whānaus, their people who stood behind them, beside them and in front of them during their studies. This is not to be underestimated because uh, these are the people that have uh, put, put the person back up when they've not passed an assignment and put them back on their standing up and move them forward. And um, I think that we as the ITE need to think of that more, strategies for working with Fano to enhance their tonga, their child, their children, their grandchild, their mokoponos, um, move into uh, tertiary education. And uh, finally, to the seminar organisers and reviewers, the people here today that have set up the technology for you people taking the time after a busy day with working with children or working at other jobs, thank you for coming tonight and um, being with us and, and listening and reflecting with us. Um, and I'd finally like to say, I think to my colleagues here that I walk alongside, we always walk as equals in this journey and share, collaborate, laugh, and remember that we do it together, that we may be under the umbrella of an organization, but our full commitment is to the teaching profession. We are all teachers and we know we have taught and we still teach and we know that at the end of the day, our hearts are still with the teacher in the center, working alongside children. So um, we hope to be of service to you and to the sector. That's what this research is about and how we commit to supporting you to have really good student teachers to come out. So um, with that, I'd like to pass it on to Pauline to do um, a karakia just in our commitment to biculturalism. Oh, sorry, no, we're going to references. There we go. But you always have to have references. So for a copy of the report, please email Andrew Gibbons. He's our, um, the guy that's the secretary at the moment for this report. And so he's happy to dispense this port, the report out to you. Um, and uh, Justine's going to um, bring up some questions from the chat room in a minute. And then we've got some where to next. So I suppose I'll hand it back to Justine at the moment to um, give us any feedback that's coming from the chat room. Kia ora. Kia ora Mary Liz um, and kia ora koutou. So at the moment, the question section is fairly quiet. Uh, so please do, if you have questions that you would like to ask the um, research team directly about their research, please do pop them into the Q&A. Um, and if you've got any responses that you would like to add to those questions that we were asking you or that you were being asked um, around your own memories of Hawara and the things that you wish you had known about a little bit more when you were a student teacher, um, please do add them to the chat. And we, I will start off with um, a question that has come in from Melissa to the team. So what key changes have been or will be made to ITE programs based on the findings? So is anybody making any changes in their institutions currently based on um, what has already been found? Mm. Um, I can um, start that one off, Justine. Kia ora, Melissa. Um, so here at AUT, we've um, just gone through our review with the Teaching Council. Um, and in new programs, there's the um, expectation that there's a series of key teaching tasks um, that graduate teachers will um, be able to um, uh, enact once they um, step into um, the early learning space. Um, so one of those uh, key teaching tasks uh, really focused in on student teacher um, and, and therefore teacher um, prioritizing their own well-being. So um, and it was it was a very interesting um, sort of reflection on on this um, because I we didn't want um, well being to become something and um, that student teachers needed to manage for themselves um, because we do see it as being a collective um, work that needs to. Um, be uh, respected by all, all parties. So rather than uh, teachers taking responsibility for their own well-being and removing that from um, employers or um, the Teaching Council, or the Ministry of Education, um, and it's solely falling upon teachers. 
Um, but we also wanted to uh, really promote well-being as being a core thing of what um, it means to be a teacher. So um, the focus, we, we have this passion and this, this burning sort of um, motivation to care for children, but to just bring a little bit of that back and, and care for the self as well. Um, so that would have been one of the most immediate changes that has been made through this research. Um, I think in terms of day-to-day -day teaching with student teachers, um, it's talking more about um, the sort of realities of being an early childhood teacher and what that might mean and, and bringing that back again to um, building in practices into your teaching that, that will sustain your own well-being as you um, progress through the profession. Mm. Awesome. Kia ora, Rebecca. Um, Pauline, did you have something to share from your perspective? I did, and I, I you know, um, kia ora Fano, and I didn't introduce myself before, I was a bit nervous, so um, I agree with you, Rebecca, that our, uh, our degree at Unitech has been uh, rewritten uh, to incorporate uh, hauora and wellbeing. We have a course specifically designed to that, but also above um, the design of the program comes a sense that I think possibly emanates across the country right now, you know, people's response to COVID and the pandemic and um, mental health issues has meant that we are kinder and, uh, you know, that we focus on utify and, you know, being kind and thinking about, uh, you know, caring for the mental well-being of our students more than we have uh, in the years prior. So I feel really uh, blessed to be part of this group. And, you know, uh, Justine, as you know, we, um, we really do care for each other in the group. And, uh, and, and you know, we don't um, prioritize, uh, we prioritize relationship above our knowledge. And uh, that's really special. And it also um, enhances our, um, our abilities as teachers of our students to um, recognize their struggles and to connect with them too. So that's really um, the significant thing for me. It's exciting to be part of. And, um, you know, I encourage uh, you out there, if you, if you really feel that we need to motivate change, well, the change has to come with us. We can't point the finger and say they need to do it. We need to do it. And, and, I'm, and I'm very keen uh, for anybody who's listening to be involved in this process. So we'd love to hear from you. Kia ora. Kia ora, Pauline. And Mary Liz. Oh, kia ora. Thank you, uh, Justine and Rebecca and Pauline. I think because our provider has a lot of our student teachers in, in the workforce, it has really made us reflect um, with our criteria around practicum and offering more home centre um, practicums in the uh, rewriting of, and the accreditation of our new program because um, the financial struggles that were mentioned in our, our research as well, that um, students are under the pressure now financially. So the earn as you learn has, um, has taken you know, on, on new meaning, pressure in the centre, pressure of studies, pressure in the home. And this has been... Um, you know, exacerbated by the COVID um, condition, but I think it's always been there. And uh, now ITEs are seeing more and more of this. Um, I think the, 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 with the research too, that it's um, one size does not fit all has come in through really looking at wellbeing and all that you don't just get a definition and, and, and a reference and that and some sort and a toolkit that's to set all te student teachers. We're lo looking more, using the principles of te whaariki and how we set up relationships for knowing the tanga, kotahi tanga, rangitanga, manaki tanga with our um, students. So um, yeah, it's exciting times and I think as this group progresses, um, we will come up with hopefully more resources to offer our institution that we collectively agree with because I think if we have consistency across the ITE um, on on supporting our students, then this will make hopefully um, big ramifications for our sector. Kia ora. Kia ora Mary Liz. Um, we have another question, um, and I'll open this to anybody in the panel that would like to answer this. 
uh, what are some possible ways of making the connections between initial teacher education providers and professional learning and development providers in addressing early childhood teachers, hawara and wellbeing? And what would the support systems of hawara and wellbeing look like for early childhood teachers? Anybody got any thoughts about that? And this is the tricky thing when you have a panel of many, everybody's being very polite and deciding who will go first. Pauline, I think it might be you. Oh, kia ora. I think that um, the, the biggest uh, thing is to, to focus on well-being. And, um, and, and I think by doing that, it does open up some um, avenues for people to connect. Instead of um, focusing on uh, performance or um, you know, marks or whatever, we're actually um, focusing more on caring for the, the well-being and the mental well-being of our students. Uh, I, I noticed a comment earlier there about, um, you know, navigating the, between um, online and face-to-face -face and that the demands of that. And we've all experienced how difficult it is to be online for long periods of time. And so, you know, just simply by saying to each other, how are you? And just remembering the relational nature of our profession really is a good way of rejuvenating um, those ideas. So, um, yeah, Rainey's got a hand up. Kia ora, Rainey. Kia ora, Pauline. And just to add to what Pauline had said, and just following from Rebecca said, I think by having the concept and having an active discussion about her and well-being in the curriculum of teacher education we are actually empowering the student teachers to be actively thinking about their own her and well-being and how to articulate it to another person and in a way hoping that they are also feeling that it is not just a responsibility on themselves. So whenever they come across in an uncomfortable situation with their practicum providers, we hope that they feel they have the support from the initial teacher education providers um, that would enable them to step up for themselves and to actually share that voice and have a conversation and hopefully negotiate for a situation that is better for their whole aura and well-being. Thanks, Rainey. Um, linking into that um, is another question, and um, well, it begins with a statement, which is that the past few years of negotiating the COVID-19 pandemic have had such an impact on student teacher hawara and well-being. What guidance could we offer to students who are suffering from COVID fatigue um, and also those challenges of moving from constantly face-to-face -to, -face to online learning and backwards and forwards? Have any of you um, been able to put anything into place as a result of what we've you found from the research um, in response to that? Oh, kia ora, Justine. Yes, is the answer. Um, what we've been doing is actually connecting more with our students. And I know that sounds um, simple, but actually it's the simple stuff that sometimes works for people. It's about small and often. And um, so for me, as um, negotiating on a regular basis, that blended, um, I'm on and on predominantly online with Open Polytechnic, but we also work in uh, centres and have tutorials and workshops. Um, I think it's whatever forum you have is connecting in with individuals, not just seeing a collective body. Of, and um, so what I do is regularly is don't assume that I know what that person needs. Okay, because it said about that toolkit again. And I think sometimes in these day and ages, it's easy to get sort of a box that you can just pull out and say, we've done her order, and we've done well-being. Whereas actually the essence of it, I think, is focusing in on what that person needs now, not in the past and not in the future. It's sort of now. And then accessing resources. But myself, as I might often not know the answer, so I go to other colleagues within my institution, but sometimes this group and say, hey, have you, what have you done? 
And so, and sometimes it's beyond my professional capabilities. This person needs support beyond me, and that's cool too. And recommending, um, sometimes you know, the simple thing is just giving time. At something that we all say we don't have enough of, but actually, you know, giving time for that person to address an issue with their studies that might be about referencing, but actually it leads to a whole lot of things. So um, for me, I've learned to slow down and prioritize as a lecturer of the institution. And when it comes to me, you know, why have you spent so long there? I, well, my first comment is why not? And the other thing is, you know, um, are we not all in to building people with resilience, not burnout? Um, are we not into that? So for me, it's about standing in your mana as a profession and going back to the other thing about how can we work together as a sector? Well, the professional um, sector for ECE needs to stand together, not alone again. We need to be on the pie pie together saying what matters for student teachers and teachers when they graduate and teachers when they become head teachers. We need to stand together and say, this is what we need and why. We need to educate people. Kia ora. Kia ora, Mary Liz. Uh, did anybody else have anything that they wanted to add to that? Because I know, obviously, supporting students um, at a distance is you know, something that I think many of us have found really challenging, um, particularly when you know, we, we're not getting all of those other forms of information that we might normally get when we can actually see people in person or or not see pe people in person when we know that they're not turning up to class and those kinds of things um, that can really impact on our ability to to tune in to our students. Kitty, was there something you wanted to add at this point? I did. I just wanted to pop in um, and share my experience of teaching um, during the COVID, during the pandemic and moving to online because um, although. Uh, different students experience this different, really differently, and some students enjoyed uh, enjoyed that experience, and some students found it hugely challenging. One thing, one silver lining for me that came out of the pandemic experience was that there was a subtle shift in the institution towards taking care of students, and and, and it meant that we were able to let go of some of the kind of uh, strict kind of roadblocks that we sometimes put in front of students in terms of getting work in on time and penalties and, and negotiating those sorts of things. Those, those things still exist, but we're able to be much more flexible and responsive to um, each student's situation. And so I found that even though we weren't um, together in the same place, for some students, for some students, my relationship with them actually developed because um, because we were able to sort of we were able to ask students how are you what's happening for you what can we do to support you in a way that we might not have if things had remained as they were um, and so that was something that I really learned and took away from my for myself was that um, actually beginning with those relationships and that um, checking in with students about how they are um, can often facilitate relationships and open up opportunities to support students in ways that are relevant to them and in COVID-19 I think we had, during the lockdowns especially we had much more of a mandate from our institution and to be flexible with students in that way. I, I notice it's creeping back towards not being uh, when it's the, the same now but um, that was re that was really important learning for me in terms of develop when I mean, we talk about relationships and early childhood but how do you enact relationships when you're a lecturer with a student teacher and I think um, for me I learned a lot about what you put first in your communications with students so that was yeah Kara Kitty yeah and I think that has been a really important learning for many of us um, I'm just aware of the time and I know that we were going to talk a little bit now about where to next potentially with this research and then I know that Jacoba has been very busy in the background creating a poem um, in response to things that people have shared in the chat so is there anyone going to be sharing about where to next in terms of this research project can I just say one thing in relation to that if, if that's possible of course. Um, um, firstly uh, Justine your research I think is part of the where to next because I've, I've seen uh, the work you do with teachers, um, that is, uh, in a sense, an answer to, to Sarah's questions around 
not so much guidance, but opportunities for student teachers to recognize the value of certain practices that really actually make a difference. Um, they make a difference in terms of the way we engage with the complexities of what we do. Um, and also they provide us with an energy for, for recognizing our voice and for speaking up. So, you know, there are, I think, that then connects to the notion of ways in which um, this project and and in ITE, we can work with professional development, professional learning and development providers as to really get a, a strong um, a strong discourse and practice of exploring uh, well-being and how order, you know, both, both through conversation and through practices of mindful self-compassion and meditation and, and the, the kinds of things that before this project, you know, I, I used to didn't used to make sense to me that I would spend time on those things rather than spending time um, like trying to uh, address systemic issues. And now I start to realize that the energy needed to address the systemic issues is really managed by um, practices of care for self. Um, the other thing uh, going forward, I think at the moment we, we have a new code of practice for the pastoral care of tertiary and international learners. And I think what we need to be is very alert to making sure that that code of practice doesn't become a, a, a code which universities use to ensure they're not they are ticking out a box to maintain a um, to, to maintain a legal position or a legal duty rather than to actually see this as a challenge for universities to understand the holistic nature of what they do and and that's um, this is something that rainy has been researching in terms of her look at um, peer mentoring and, and academic support and understanding that those kinds of things that students experience need to be understood holistically. So there's lots of different ways in which we're hopefully answering some of those questions and making those connections. And it's an, it's a, a, an ongoing project. So, you know, as people have already said, we welcome people to, to get on board and to look at different ways that we can all work together on this um, Shouting. Secretary Very out. <laughs> and a fine secretary you are, too. So I'm going to invite Jacoba now to share with us um, the poem that she's been creating in response to the feedback that people have been sharing with us. Thank you, um, Justine. So thank you all for your contributions to the chat and responding to those questions, um, as well as um, the um, panel members for sharing further insights around um, our research project. So what I've um, done is I've created a poem that sort of brings together both panel, um, uh, panel conversations really, and all of the responses that you've shared in the chat. So the poem is called Holding a Space for Haora. Holding a Space for Haora. Memories of Haora felt through experience, Haora in memory and its complex manifestations, acknowledging the strength of others and celebrating people, cultural background, the first experience welcoming and warm. Haora, the relational space, checking in with each other, COVID fatigue, online learning, sharing sooner rather than later, networks don't operate on their own, providing support team player, Pastoral care, no one size fits all. It's okay to ask for help. How order the space that matters. Knowing your limits, negotiation, wear your oxygen mask before you help others. The ebbs and flows intermittently sporadic, but interconnected. Balance with family, work and study. Taha fano, giving time, standing together, shifting the institution. Haora, the heart of the matter. So I'll go ahead and share that poem on the chat um, and we'll also make it available to you all. That's a collective poem um, from all of our um, insights and, and stories in Dalanor shared today. I'll hand it back. Yara <laughs> Yakoba, that was amazing. And um, I think, you know, it's so powerful when we hear our words and our thoughts reflected back to us and brought together in that um, collective way. So thank you, Yakova. Thank you to all the members of the research team for sharing the findings of the first phase of the research project with our Early Childhood Seminar Series audience.
in such an informative and interactive way. Um, and we hope that all of you who have joined us here tonight have found this presentation thought provoking and that it has given you some useful things to think about and consider in relation to um, your own well being, the well being of others, and your teaching practice, um, no matter who you are practicing that teaching with. Mm -hmm. So Namahi Nui Kia Koto, a big thank you again to our presenters for this evening. And I will hand to Pauline to conclude with a karakia. Kia ora Fano, uh, me on inoi tato. Kua wehe atu tato iraru itirangi marie te harikoa, ne te aroha, home year, who year, tai here. Kia ora Fano. Kia ora koutou, ka kite anō.